full moon on July 21st. This is a good and proper full moon. It's kind of like the full moon that you would think about in fairy tales and storybooks. It's like the werewolves are coming out. The emergency rooms are going to be full with just weird stuff going on. A uh, couple reasons for that. One is it's in the final degree of Capricorn. We'll talk about what that means, but like super fated karmic -y, um structures crumbling transforming the transforming aspect also comes in with pluto because pluto is conjunct this full moon so it's like you've got lord of the underworld conjunct the full moon this is it's like heyday you know it's it's really like the witches will dance wildly. Um, the deep hidden occult gets to come out to play. I mean, really and truly, it's like vampire movies, Halloween, witch movies, werewolf, all that stuff. It's that's this kind of a full moon, really and truly. Um, there's some really great gifts to it, though, and I'll talk about that in a bit. There's some big change being asked to be made. So, you know, let's talk about what is change around the time of a full moon. So full moons are culmination. It's the, cul it's the culmination. It's the peak of something. You know, something has, um, um, it's like worn out its course. You know, it's almost like it's the time for the harvest. It's like, what what have we built? What's the in, in the final degree of Capricorn? I mean, this is ridiculous. This is like a completion degree. So really feeling into what is it that has been completed or what are maybe a few final steps I need to make to complete something. Here's the interesting part about this full moon is that we've just gone through a bunch of Uranus stuff, right? Like lightning bolt change of direction, change of trajectory, um, uh, like things coming out of left field at us. Some of us have sort of felt like that. It can be external world or it can be internal. Like it's just out of the blue, you're suddenly feeling like you need to move. This is a really good time to start paying attention to some of that stuff. Or external events coming at you like weird random stuff out of left field. Like what? Why the? How the? And it's a really great moment in time to reflect on it to let the full moon energy shine a light on it so full moons are about revealing it's shining a light on what's been hidden previously especially since it's conjunct pluto so feel into that question shining a light on what's been hidden previously what um <laughs> what is this full moon what is Pluto? You can even go a little further and just go, what is Pluto staring at in me? Pluto is a glorious, it's a dark masculine aspect. And one of his great gifts is to bring consciousness, right? Bring consciousness to the parts of us that we can't see. And so you could sit in a meditation with Pluto and you could just sit there like Hades, Pluto, Lord of the underworld, right? Just call him in and, and ask him like, what is it that you would stare at, Hades, Pluto, that would, because he's all about your evolution, you know, it's it's like grungy <laughs> a lot of times, because you got to go into the underworld, right, like for reclamation or you know, shadow work, that's him, he's a shadow worker, but it's all about your evolution, it's, it's your soul's evolution, he's a soul point, he's a very good point to look at in your chart for soul evolution, it's evolutionary astrology, really, Pluto. Um, so <clears throat> you can feel into, um, that question or sitting in that kind of a meditation and <laughs> I'll give you a really weird little insight or it's just fun. This is a little bit of playful something, something. This is a practice that I love doing, um, with Pluto. So Pluto is also like dominant submission, Pluto and Persephone. If you ever wanted to like dance in the realms of domination and submission and like, where's the sacredness of it? What's the gifts in it? You know, where's the power in both of those roles? Those are archetypal energies that, that you could like work with um, and open to, to get to the, uh, the like magic. There's magic, there's grace. There's a lot of gifts in that dynamic um, when you dance it with love. But what you could do, this is just this is just a fun little Sabrina personal practice, is I love 
meditating in like the domination submission place with Pluto, right? I love it. I, I love it. And it's almost like, um, I don't know, like you could be chained to Pluto's throne because he's king of the underworld, lord of the underworld. You could be like chained to his throne, right? And like having this like intimate, like showing you your most vulnerable spots, like your most, the things that make you squirmy, right? Like, and it's, this isn't sexual at all. I mean, it might be, but it does, it's not sexual at all. It's like literally this, this like dominating force that's coming with pure love. It's pure love. It's pure consciousness, it's pure love, pure consciousness, pure love. But, and it's so direct line and it's so all accepting. This is the Lord of the underworld. There's nothing he's not seen. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing he can't love. There's nothing he can't bring consciousness to. There's nothing, nothing. Like, the things that you are the most afraid of, he doesn't care. The things that you are the most nervous about, he doesn't care. Like, the, the things, you know, maybe it's like you're going to step into that new thing. You're going to put yourself out there and have this really vulnerable conversation with a loved one. You're going to admit to yourself that you hate your job. Pluto doesn't care. It's such a beautiful masculine archetypal energy to work with because he just doesn't care. He's like, he, he takes the sting out of things. So this is a full moon where you've got an opportunity to take the sting out of things. Take, it, take the sting out of things. Our shadow work workshop is a really good one to do right now. It's like 47 bucks. So if you're like, this sounds great, Sabrina. I love that you can, you know, be tied up to Pluto's throne and do a bunch of shadow work on your own, but I have no way. I don't have these tools. I don't know how to do those. So shadow work workshop, I, I guide you right into it. Um, it's a it's big, big magic. It's good juju. You can also like weave in the archetypal energy of Hades when you go into shadow work workshop. So you'll find a link for that below. Um, or we're happy to get you the link if you, I don't know, drop a comment that says shadow. Um, we'll respond with the link right to you if that helps you to find it. But um, uh, so this is a full moon where it's like um, taking the sting. What can you do to take the sting out of what it is that's really wanting to be revealed from your depths? really wanting to be revealed from your depths. What's wanting to come out of the hidden? What's wanting to come out of the shadow? And this is big excavation time. It's it's big. I'm, I'm telling you, this is, it's the second full moon in Capricorn. It's happening on the 29th degree of Capricorn. Pluto is just making his move out of Capricorn into Aquarius. It's a full moon right on that fucking point. That's intense. That is enormous. Let me give you some more words around this point and around Pluto. Okay, so Capricorn structures. Um, karma, time, father, time, karma, structures. Um, you want to think uh, foundations crumbling, right? All those sort of things. Also mastery. Capricorn is mastery. It's mastery. So all of that energy, right? Full moon in Capricorn, this like what Pluto is just leaving. He's still, he's, he's like leaving it. He's in zero Aquarius now. Um, but there's still a dance. He's not fully, he's coming back, blah, 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 whatever. We don't have to go into all of that stuff. But this whole area is super lit up. And so it's also lighting up. Um, Pluto is death, rebirth. Like it's deep transformation, like deep transformation in the guts of the guts of the guts of the guts. It's like, instead of transforming your yard by mowing the lawn, it's like Pluto comes in with one of those like rototillers. Is that what you call those things? I don't know. But he comes in, he like plows your lawn, right? He's like churning up the soil and the dirt. He's like, uh, no, we're going to get to the root of this. We are going for a deeper transformation. I don't want to just like mow the lawn and make it look pretty. We're, we're like deeply transforming death, right? Death to all of your grass and then rebirth. We're going to lay sod down. Like you're going to have a whole new looking lawn that you couldn't even fathomed was going to happen. But first we had to like rototill your whole lawn. Like we had to kill off the current grass, weeds, whatever. We had to kill that off. That's Pluto. Like I want to get to the root of it. I want a deeper transformation that's him and he's loud <laughs> he's loud like this is a full moon for that um and so 
feeling also into, um, let me feel for anything else around us that I can I can weave in. It's such a great weekend for shadow work. It's such a great weekend for golden shadow. So golden shadow, shadow work, we always think like, oh my gosh, it's going to be a deep dive into like my wounds or pain or healing or I got to like release repressed emotions and reclaim lost parts of self and it's going to be so horrible. But it's also like... Um, soul retrievals. It's also like remembering gifts, remembering, um, reawakening, reclaiming. You want to think all the re-words too. So it's like <laughs> rewilding. Ah, so funny, Sabrina. I've been filming too many workshops today. I feel like um, it's just nice to be here on the podcast with you. I was filming Medusa earlier um, in the Medusa Mysteries, which was stunning and glorious. Um, for those of you who are like Jones in to do the rewilding archetypal work, it's coming. It's coming. I promise. We have that was number ten. I have ten of them done. Ten of thirty six done. They're not out or public yet. Um, some of you are in um, some of the programs that are doing them now, but they're coming. They're coming. Um, anyways, um, it's really nice to be here with you. And I'm sorry if I'm like extra goofy or a little bit giddy. Um, okay, so let me just see if see how I want to wrap up. Um, or what else I can offer you in this sort of Pluto conversation. Um, Golden Shadow, let me finish this thought really quickly. It's also about the things that make you squirmy around your power. Pluto is about power, like stepping into your power. And I know that there are aspects of like, like if, if I um, step into this, I don't know, this way of being that I feel, or if I step into this gift, or oh my gosh, if I open up to that much like radiance or, or joy or aliveness or life force or um, I don't know if I, but whatever it is for you, we all have a very unique shadow, golden shadow, all unique gifts that are just waiting to be awoken and potentials, they're, they're potentials, they are residing dormant within you. And so this is a big part also of Pluto is switching on these dormant capacities, like pushing you into your power. Not, and it's going to be your power with, not power over, right? It's not like overlording. It's like power with, but your authentic empowerment. And what is that when you are becoming more and more and more radiant, more and more and more blossoming, more and more and more empowered in your true, genuine, unique self? Because again, Pluto doesn't care. Like he doesn't care what makes you feel squirmy. He doesn't care what makes you nervous. He doesn't, he doesn't care. He's just like, what, what, why, why would you care what other people think? Why, why, would, why, what? Like, no, like we need you in your full truth. We need you aw awoken to those gifts. Like, come on, let's go. Let's do this thing. Right. Um, and he'll, it's, it's beautiful. Anyways, the domination submission is a really fun meditation to do. It's not for everybody, but, um, just something to feel into maybe, um, uh, okay, let's feel into a little bit more. So I'm loving the fact that on this full moon, we also have Mercury as the mind, translator of the gods. We always want to think translator of the gods. So we're able to translate particular energies, particular gods, archetypal energies that we normally wouldn't be able to. That's Mercury. Whenever Mercury is aligned with something, we suddenly have this capacity to um, attune to the wisdom of another planet. Another planet's just another name for a god, an archetype. So Uranus is the planet that Mercury is square to. So square is a tough aspect, but it doesn't matter. That's okay. It just means that the revelations might come in like uh, getting hit over the head with a bat, <laughs> which is okay. We're still going to get the revelations. Uranus, lightning bolts, rapid change, rapid awakening, radical revolutionary, kundalini awakener, um, but it's like expect sudden shifts, sudden changes, breaking free, breaking out of, and he's been going off all week. He was part of the Mars Uranus Al Gaul conjunction opposing Lilith, right? Which we all been talking about on the 15th, but now he's square to Mercury. So the mind, this is beautiful. The mind in this like deep excavating transformation that Pluto's doing on a full moon, which is revealing more about us. We have the capacity for the mind to get the insights around the changes that need to be made, around the breakthroughs. What are we breaking out of? What are we breaking into? What are we breaking through? What is the radical action you're called to take? Even if it's like radical self-care, right? It doesn't have to be like radical outward. Um, we, we, sometimes we think like radical action and we think it has to be like some grand gesture of like, 
picketing your post office. I don't know if that's a grand gesture or not. I don't know why that one came out. But um, but what is your like radical action? And there's also a bit of freedom that comes with Uranus. And this whole energy has been building all week. This like freedom, freedom fighter. But what if you were fighting for your own freedom? So you kind of feel into this like, all right, I'm a freedom fighter for my own liberation. My own Pluto conjunct the moon, my own empowerment. I'm a freedom fighter for my own empowerment. What is it that's come to a karmic completion that I'm ready to cut loose? What is it that's come to a karmic door opening that I'm ready to step into? Beautiful questions to ask ourselves. Beautiful things. Rewind that, replay that a million times if you need to. Write that down right there. That's a really great thing to do during this full moon. Okay. Some beautiful aspects to feel into, although I think a lot of it's really going to be shaded. I mean, this is intense energy. It's big. It's big 29th degree of Capricorn, full moon conjunct Pluto. Uranus doing the mind stuff. Like that's going to really overshadow everything. But there's a few other things to feel into. Venus is in a sextile with Jupiter. That's just nice. That's just nice. Jupiter, expansive. Venus, she's been through a lot. <laughs> she's been through a lot. She went through Neptune energy. Then she opposed Pluto, right? She's been like dissolving. And then she was like with the Lord of the underworld and the Venusian part of herself. And now she's with Jupiter, right? So that just feels kind of nice. Feels kind of nice for Venus. That um, feminine aspect of us, she's kind of able to just expand a bit. So those could be some really good like nourishing practices during this full moon. If it gets really intense, take a bubble bath, lean into Venus, just be like, all right, Venus and Jupiter is grace bomb, like grace bombing our feminine. Go make love. I don't know. to yourself, the earth, a tree, your partner, right? Like th that, that's there. Maybe you let the lovemaking turn into like some sort of sex magic. That's Pluto. He's got a lot of sex magic, some sort of like sex magic. And you end up doing like deeply transformative, um, wildly alchemical reclamation of your golden shadow while you're having an orgasm. Totally possible, by the way. I should start teaching a workshop on that. I really have um, been in <laughs> creation mode a little too long today, but I do think a workshop on that would be amazing. Um, leave a note below if you want more on sex magic. Um, I think there is a podcast that I did on sex magic. I didn't go very far into it, but I did go into it. Um, we'll put a link down below for that too. Um, but write sex magic in the comments if you're like, yes, this is a theme I want more of, Sabrina. I'm super happy to. Um, I sometimes just don't know like what... Um, would really light y'all up and what would really serve. So it's beautiful to hear from you uh, what it is truly, genuinely that would light you up. Okay, um, let's keep talking. We have to talk about Neptune. Have to talk about Neptune. Neptune's been on and off, big player. Then he's kind of backed off during the Mars Uranus intensity. And now he is back in action during this full moon. He is in a sextile and a trine. So those are beautiful aspects, beautiful aspects. But what Neptune does with this full moon, um, so it's sextile and trine to the full moon and the sun, obviously, because the sun and the moon are um, opposing each other. And so Neptune, he brings in, I like this, Remember how Pluto was like deep transformation and he's like, I still don't know if that's the right word, rototilling. Maybe leave me a comment down below too to let me know like if it's not called rototilling or was that just like a weird brand when I was a kid? I have no idea. Anyways, plowing the field, churning up the dirt. Um, so where that's like how Pluto does deep death for rebirth transformation, Neptune, who's also a player in this, so he's also in the transformative mix, but how he does transformation he brings in a cloud, <laughs> just like a cloud of unknowing, like he dissolves, right? So Pluto just like death, like let's rototill some shit up. He dissolves things into nothingness and he's really good at working in the mind. He's mystic energy. He's mystic, like mystic mind. He dissolves and he dissolves, <laughs> which is interesting because it's a full moon in Capricorn, which is so reality based. It's so structures. It's so boundaries and borders, right? And foundations. And it's like 3D physical, tangible world. Yes. And Neptune's like, all is one. There are no boundaries. Here we are. 
the interconnectedness to the all of everything. <sighs> Isn't this good? <laughs> that's that's Neptune. <laughs> so honoring the dualistic nature of that, and you might feel that some of that dualistic nature. Um, happening could be a really good time for spiritual practices. I would highly recommend not doing, isn't it funny? I'm going to say don't do spiritual bypassing, but how do you know that you're doing spiritual bypassing? <laughs> like, isn't that funny? It's like, no one's going to admit to it. Like, okay, cool. I'm not going to spiritually bypass this weekend. I'm just going to go off into the void and the all of nothing for three days. And it's going to be so great. And I'm totally coming into union with the divine, which is a really powerful and beautiful and great practice. <laughs> But you're not going to go like, oh, there was something else I could have been doing that would have been truer to the moment, that would have served the moment more, that would have served my true self more, my highest self more. <laughs> like, isn't that funny? I know. Oh, my goodness. I should always film podcasts um, after filming workshops all day. Uh, so... Let me feel for what I can offer around that. In order to not spiritually bypass, <laughs> something we can do, and you feel for you, right? Maybe you've got all kinds of tools and tricks and practices and tips on, you know, how you really align with what is the greatest, truest practice for you in the moment. But even just that, like, I set aside an hour every day for meditation. Every day. That's, that's my practice to myself, minimum. A minimum for me it's much more than that but minimum and that journey that can go anywhere so I I'm a meditation teacher I have a billion different meditations in my toolkit right plus I'm just the most creative SOB on the planet maybe not the most creative but ridiculously creative and um, have just learned to tune in and like yeah, I don't know like get like, hey, Pluto, what's the greatest practice right now? Um, so it's not that I have to like read a book and have a bunch of things. Anyways, blah, blah, blah. We're going too deep into stuff. But um, if this serves, it's like, here's my meditation time or my sitting time and just go, what is it that most serves this moment, right? Attune to your highest soul self, highest self, right? Highest self, my spirit self, my soul self, my highest self. Um, a friend of mine uses these words, heart and soul, heart and soul, like align me, heart and soul, heart and soul, heart and soul, totally align, totally align. What is it that most serves? And if I were to feel into this moment for me, the thing that most serves would be for me to go do womb work right now. It would just be for me to tap into my womb. There's a lot of stuff going on with my womb. My grandmother um, is in the hospital and I can actually feel in this moment that there is something that would really, really serve for me to do in my womb around um, that ancestral line, that womb, that womb, like, and it's just like this beautiful love, womb, mother, grandmother, womb, wisdom. Um, and that's what I would do. That's, that's, that's what I would do. But I ask the question first of what serves. So this weekend, when I say spiritual practice can be really powerful, but be careful for Neptune's tendency to invite us to spiritually bypass or to escape. To, it's like escape into the delusion, the illusion, the escapism. That's, that's, that's the red flag to watch out for there. Um, and so uh, asking yourselves that question, um, if, that, if that serves for you. And if you don't have a whole lot of practices in your toolkit, get some more practices in your toolkit. Get, get, get like womb wisdom practice in your toolkit or get some like heart awakening practices. If you want a heart workshop, there's a free one, Heart Warrior. That's a good practice to do. Um, we just went through some Chiron, um, some big, beautiful Chiron stuff this week. Mars, Mars warrior, um, heart warrior. This is really good. Mars is, um, what the hell is he doing? He just moved into Gemini. He's at zero degrees of Gemini. So Mars just moved into Gemini. He's trying Pluto. I like that. I like that really like that. Um, so if you're like, I don't know what, how to practice, I don't know what to do, go do shadow workshop, go get the heart warrior workshop, do both of them on the full moon. I would do, I would do heart warrior first as a warm up into shadow workshop. That's how I would do 
those. And then I would join membership because we're getting together on the first for a big journey. But there's also five spiritual pathways into, I don't even know, I don't, they were powerful though. This, we walk, worked with the dark goddess in this particular month's workshop, but that's sitting there um, in rewilding membership for you. That's a two hour journey. Plus there's like seven hours of workshops in there too. So if you're like, I need more tools in my toolkit, um, there, there's a way. And that's all, that'd be like under a hundred dollars. I think, no, maybe it would be like a hundred and I don't even know, like $110 or something like that, right? And you've got like nine hours and probably 30 or 40 different practices right there. Um, so no excuses. <laughs> um, okay, let me see. This is the final piece that I'll end our conversation on is Eris. Eris, goddess of discord, goddess of chaos for truth. She's a truth seeker. She's a truth warrior. She will take us into deeper truths within ourselves. She goes retrograde. So she's loud. So when they go retrograde, they're louder. Their energy is intensified. So we've also got the goddess of chaos and discord for truth. She's a truth warrior. Um, she's louder during this full moon too. Uh, and I love her. I, I, I love that aspect. She's the one who threw the golden apple um, into the room of goddesses and said, who's the fairest of them all? And she was like, yeah, well, we're going to find out a lot of stuff here. So she's a really great shadow worker. So her working in conjunction with Pluto, right, during this full moon is just this powerful. It's, it's powerful. And if we really hold this intention of um, this is the time for reclamation of my power, it's a time for reclamation of my power. It will really help, um, really help. It's a time for, um, let me feel for another moment. It's a time for um, really honoring the change that's being asked to be made. Time for reclamation of my power and really honoring the change that's being asked to be made. And that could be an inner change. It could be a daily habit change. It could be a much like more tangible, physical, worldly, outer worldly change, but um, really honoring that during this full moon. My gosh, it's great to be here with you. Um, huge love to you all. Uh, if this video is served and you don't want to miss anything going forward, maybe hit the subscribe button if that serves. Hit the like button if you liked it. Leave a comment. I'm always in the comments the first two days after a video goes out and I love hearing from you all. This is a co-creation and I'm crazy grateful for you all. I wouldn't be here doing this if it wasn't for our rewilding community and my rewilding team which are an amazing group of individuals. Um, so I just, huge gratitude to our community and everybody who's a part of Rewilding. Y'all make this happen.